Hey there card readers, April here on Tarot and Witchery. Good to see you all. I'm going to do a month ahead spread here that I'm going to share with you that's using the foundation card technique that I talked about in another video. So you can find that in my Learning Tarot, Beginner Tarot Learning Library playlist um, on YouTube. And hopefully I've remembered to link it down below in the description box, okay? Or it'll be at the end of the video linked. And so today I'm going to be using the Divine Energy Oracle. Watch this magic. <laughs> I wanted to make this easy. This is the Divine Energy Oracle by Sonia Choquette. And I'm going to use the Tarot de Carlotides, which I love. I do not know the name of this person because it is not on the box. It is a Fournier deck, though. And I love Fournier decks because I love the way that these shuffle. They're just the size of them, the shape of them. They're just a little bit longer and thinner, making them super fun. Okay, so the idea behind this. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay these out really quickly so you can see the spread and then I'll read the cards for those of you that are like learning how to read and learning how to use this technique of an anchor card. Now you could use, you could do an anchor card honestly with, um, not anchor, sorry, you could use a foundation card with uh, the tarot as well, but I really want to show you how to integrate Oracle cards. And at the end of this, I'll go ahead and do a mock reading with the cards I draw so that you can just see how I do that. All right. So uh, this is going to be the month ahead. So we would do week one. And what I love is that I've got this great, these, these great words. This is why I love this deck, love this deck. And I, I really suggest if you can get something that has words on it, and I have a couple of those, I should do a video on decks. Oracle decks with words, with phrases. Keep your commitments. Week two, trust the divine plan. Week three, admit your vulnerability. And week four, retreat. <laughs> I always like it when I see that because I'm an introvert. Um, so the idea is that this is the theme for the week. Okay, this is what I really need to remember. And so this is the theme for the week. And then of course I'm gonna shuffle my tarot cards. And this would really be the medicine for the week that helps you to do that. So this is what helps me to keep my commitments in week one. And this is what helps me to trust the divine plan in week two. Ooh, interesting. This is what helps me to admit my vulnerabilities in week three. And, oh, and I love this card. This is what helps me to retreat in week four. Okay. Okay. Here we go. So if you like this idea, tell me what you think down below. If you're ready to, to head out, go ahead and push the like button if you would, because it helps the algorithm. But um, go ahead and leave me three stars below if you made it this far. All right, so moving on to my little mock reading. I'm actually gonna fix the light in here real quick. Watch this magic. Ta-da! Ding! And it's a little bit of a shadow here, but at least I can see a lot better and see what the heck is going on. Okay, so my little mock reading here. Keep your commitments. Again, this is my anchor card. This is what's anchoring the week. This is what the, the theme is. This is what I really... I keep saying anchor card. It's not an anchor card. It's actually a foundation. And I want to just say really quickly here, the difference between foundation and anchor is something completely different, right? So the foundation is something that we build on. It's solid and it's immovable. An anchor is something that we set as we're going from destination to destination. So let's just start right there. Um, okay. So this is my foundation card right here and it's keep my commitments. That's what I wanna build my week on. I wanna build everything from that. And then I got this great card here, the fool, isn't that cute? I love that. So I would read this as this week, it's really important for me to be open, open to new things and not having a preconceived notion, which is really seems counter uh, productive to keep your commitments. But maybe it just means that I need to be more open-minded in order to be able to keep my commitments. Sometimes I personally get a little stuck in how I've always done things. And so maybe I make a commitment and in order for me to do that, I need to be ready to go. I need to be ready for the adventure of it. I need to be open-minded about how I do that. 
And so I think maybe I'm going to need some creative solutions that come from being a little less um, rigid in my thinking in week one. Week two, trust the divine plan. And I got the seven of swords. And this is such an interesting one. This clown that's sword swallowing. Um, and so for me, what I think this means is that there's going to be fresh opportunity for me. Now, the Seven of Swords is sometimes looked at as the, like somebody's trying to do something crooked to you, but it also can be about opportunity, like opportunity that presents itself and being ready to take that opportunity. And that, that makes sense because this would kind of flow into that, like be open, you know, like, like week one, I'm learning to be open. And so now if I'm going to trust a divine plan, maybe I need to be ready for those opportunities, ready to take those opportunities, really being looking for that and be ready to go. Uh, And, you know, sometimes, again, when we're looking to trust the divine plan, we need to be ready for synchronicity, right? We need to be ready for the things that naturally fall together for us. And so I kind of see like maybe there's going to be some greater opportunity for me and I need to be ready for that. And that's, I'm going to be having to trust the divine plan in order to do that. And so again, I'm building and actually the foundation is building as we go. I've learned to keep my commitments. Now I'm trusting the divine plan in what I do. And again, you see the energy building here. And then here, admit your vulnerabilities. And I got the nine of cups. And this is really about the fullness of life, like really um, being in a place of gratitude. And I think when, when we are in a place where we are experiencing the fullness of, of what we are, we can admit that we don't have it all. Uh, and I think that's really important for each one of us to know that vulnerability is a superpower. And so um, admit, being able to admit my vulnerabilities is going to help me to really stay in my fullness, almost like stay in my lane, stay in my strengths. And when we admit our vulnerabilities, even out loud to ourselves or to someone else, we allow the universe to step up and to step into that place where maybe we're not as strong and create something new and powerful for us or to pick up the slack in that way. Again, watch how the energy is building in the month. You're building a foundation and the energy is building up here. I am keeping my commitments. I'm trusting the divine plan. Now, I'm, I'm, again, I'm moving into a greater place of trust. I'm seeing the synchronicities. I'm seeing the hand of the divine God, goddess, whatever you want to call it in my life and I'm able to trust that and because I'm fully moving into a place of fullness and trust, I can be vulnerable. When we are in a place of trust and we're feeling safe, we can be vulnerable. So then after this happens, we move into retreat. Now what's interesting is I see the energy in a very um, uh, patriarchal way you would think that you're getting weaker. You're going from like, yeah, I'm doing it down to I'm running away but in a balanced world where the divine feminine and the divine masculine work together there's a place of where I'm building into a place where I am now admitting my vulnerabilities and I'm really understanding who I am and now I can go into a place where I can either retreat into myself or create retreat so that I can recreate rejuvenate re-enliven myself by retreating and so again this is the foundation of the week and so retreating and I have the four of swords now doesn't that completely make sense this is the rest card you know it's it's not like this is rocket science the two of these going together uh yeah and you can see this is uh looks like the princess and the pea to me right there it's it's Alice but it reminds me of the story of the princess and the pea Um, hopefully in my retreat, I won't have a tiny pee that's causing me to have bruises. But again, coming into a place of rest and allowing myself to retreat and enjoy who I am and everything that I've done in the month and how I've grown into my most powerful self because I can relax, I can retreat, I can rest in everything that I know because I've built a solid foundation in myself. Guys, thanks so much for being here. I really enjoyed doing this and I love sharing these ideas with you. I hope you'll take this into your month and try it out. You can try this with any kind of um, 
of Oracle deck, of course, uh, and you don't have to use tarot up here. I just did for this. If you made it this far, then leave me a comment below on what you think about using this type of reading or what you think about this reading for yourself and what I said about the idea of becoming stronger by being less raw in life, <laughs> for lack of better words. I'll just use sound effects there. Until we meet again, may you enjoy life fully and may you build on your foundations one after another so that you find yourself in a place where you are strong and true.